Welcome to the Browns is the Browns podcast. Going to bootleg it out, near side looking. He's going to go long and deep. Beckham's out there. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, OBJ. Down and goal. Mayfield looks, pulls the ball down, rolls over to the right. He's going to run. He's going to five. He's in. Touchdown, Baker Mayfield. Ten. Mayfield calling signals, takes the snap, gives it, Chubb runs, dips his shoulders. He's at a 40, 35. He's at a 30. Cut back 25. He's at a 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Nick Chubb. He's over a 1,000, and the Browns lead 6 back to another episode of the Browns the Browns podcast. I'm your host, Michael, aka NFL Cleveland Browns. And today we've got some special guests to be joining us. Uh, first, we got our new sole co-host, Matt. So Matt, what's up? Hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah, okay. Uh, and then we, we are very excited to be joined by Wyatt and Carly Teller. So Wyatt, Carly... What's going on Thank now? You. It's now it's just Wyatt and Carly Teller. So exactly, it's exactly. That, that was the first time I think we've heard that that yeah. way. It sounded good. It sounded good. No, thank you for having us. Sure. So we're gonna start off. We know you guys just got married. So what is it like? What? How is life different being married? <laughs> I mean, it, it's honestly it, it's been special. I mean, we we got married um, just what over three weeks ago. Um, April yeah, 13, not, quite a month. not quite a month um but yeah so it's been it's been nice i mean it's been uh it's been special it's been nice uh not much up every is different morning. not much is different but it's been nice uh waking up to you every morning oh because you you are you did that before i did okay. um that's sweet babe um yeah it it does it's not really that different the only i think it's probably more different for me because of the name change like why it of course it's different being like oh my wife my wife but <laughs> for me like I have to like change all this stuff and like you know I say tell her a lot more and people take me a little more serious yeah her uh we've we've had to explain uh we've had to explain we you know she's going by teller now but technically it's whiting you know also because I haven't changed it yet but yeah so yeah (laughs) it's been good it's been good though so how was the the honeymoon it was did y'all hear about it do you know about what happened I saw you guys got like trapped in St. Lucia yes um I mean, it was, it was paradise. So, I mean, it wasn't the worst place to be trapped. There are worse places, but um, it it did, you know, it kind of, uh, um, you know, it was just annoying that we couldn't get back on time and I could get back to training. I mean, we, I had, as soon as we got back, uh, which was like four days later than we expected, um, I had to go straight to Virginia and go to a wedding. So it was just thing after thing after thing, but uh, you know, I I was thankful to be in the wedding and thankful to be home. Well, and we got married in Key Largo. And so we had already traveled like a month, I mean, not, not a month, a week for our wedding. And then honeymoon was seven days, turned into 11, 10, 10 or 11. 10 yeah. or 11. So we, I mean, St. Lucia was amazing, but for, for anyone listening that, I don't know if we even explained, there was a volcano eruption. So basically um, flights couldn't come in or out and we were stuck here. We had to like contact the Browns or stuck there. We had to contact the Browns and um, Andrew Berry texted us and yeah, checked was, on us. I mean, was, we were totally fine. <laughs> But it was just a whole ordeal. Yeah. yeah it so was, we finally so got back. AB came in clutch. <laughs> he came in clutch. He was like, "Hey, listen, if it gets any much longer, we'll uh, we'll get the PJ down there and we'll pick you up." I, mean, <laughs> I appreciate. That. I think it, I think it's gonna be okay. Me and Matt actually. So we're cousins. So for our grandfather's seventieth anniversary, we went or not seventieth anniversary, seventieth birthday, we went to St. Lucia as well. Like our oh, entire wow. family. So it, there was like a massive like rainstorm and we we got stranded in st lucia also it was crazy oh, yeah we were just gosh. stuck in the room for days yeah it, it was yeah, no. where did y'all um do you remember where you like where you went where it was you like i feel like it was like six or seven years ago so i don't really remember but oh, okay. yeah, yeah 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 but no i mean most of the places on the island are just absolutely beautiful i mean um, yeah, yeah we really enjoyed it it was just i know and i mean kind it, of a mess getting back there's like a there's six months that is the rainy season or there's six months that it, uh you know it's the dry season and it only rained like, you know, three or four times when we were down there, but it was just, you know, it was 85 degrees and at 320 pounds. It's a, it's a little sweating. much. I We'd be sweating. going to breakfast, sweating. Walk, walk outside and start to sweat, eating breakfast, sweating. So, but it was, no, it was paradise. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you guys got engaged at First Energy. But I just think we need to see you guys in a commercial with Emily and Baker for one of those. I said the same thing. 
I'm like, Emily, sorry, we're moving our dog. Yeah, our dog I, is. I said the same thing. I'm like, Emily, let us be in the commercial in your home. I know that it was like the jo going joke there for a little bit. It was like, hey, do we need to ask permission to use his lawn? Um, luckily, we didn't. You know, it wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. It if, all they, out. if they could get Jed on now that I think it's more your your house than Jed. So they got to get you guys on. <laughs> I know. I, I'm surprised. Jed's year one, but that's the difference between being a first rounder and a fifth rounder. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get those TV deals out. Or, you know, we would like, totally be down, though, for the record. Commercial deals. I don't. <laughs> yeah. If anyone ever hears this, <laughs> we are interested. Yeah. It, especially being an offensive lineman that doesn't have any social media. You, it's it, not hard to brand yourself, but it's just a different brand. You know what I mean? It's uh, some people like it. Some people wish that I had social media, but it's all good. I think everyone wishes you had social <laughs> yeah, media. Yeah, I know. It's fine because Car Carly's kind of like your social media manager, so that's okay. Exactly. Pretty much. You know, she's like, "Hey, take picture," and I'll be like, "Yes, I'll take pictures." You know, I guess that was the biggest difference. Uh, I went from Instagram boyfriend to Instagram husband. So right. yeah, that was one of the biggest difference with. Uh, yeah, he kills it. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I, you know, it is kind of funny how a lot of my friends are like, "Hey, you know, I'm following Carly. Uh, you know, it's the only way that I can really stay in touch with you." And it's like, "Oh yeah, Brown's sorry, Brown's give me a text." <laughs> Browns fans definitely just follow me for Wyatt content. Like I love content. it. I love it. She's gained so many followers. She's like, people like me. I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. People like, love podcasters you, message me. Like, yeah, because I don't have an Instagram. Oh, but yeah, no, she's, um, she's a good little PR. Yeah. So now on to the off season, the, it, it's sort of been, I'd say like three or four months, I think since you guys last played. So what have you been doing to like, now that's all virtual again, what are you doing to sort of stay in shape and stay on the ball? Yeah, there's no, there's no gators up here, so I can't really carry around. Too many <laughs> uh, no, all jokes. Um, you know, I, I've been training at uh, a facility up in Avon Lake and uh, been training with um, Joel and JC and Jack. Um, and we've just been, you know, kind of doing our, doing our thing. I mean, they have babies at home, you know, luckily we just have our dog. So um, it's, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, we're, we're working where we're getting after it. Um, you know, it's kind of cool to train with, uh, I mean, we still have the same program and same strength coaches. So we have, you know, similar, uh, um, routines and stuff like that, but as the guys, it's like, it's nice to hang out with them. And, you know, it's like, you know, keep that camaraderie going because a lot of the guys, it's, it, it's, it's kind of perfect that, you know, a lot of the guys leave to go to their off season houses in like Texas, Florida, wherever. And it's just a coincidence, but almost all except Jedrick, the starting O line is all here, so they can work out together, which is really good. Yeah. Um, since we're since they're doing virtual OTAs. Yeah, which I mean, obviously, I mean, some people have their own opinions on the virtual OTAs. I think that you know, last year we had our our best season ever, and we 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 were virtual. So I don't know if that means any implication, but I mean, I think that if you have a uh, a you know mature team who's responsible and a good head coach like we do. Um, I, I think that uh, most of those, you know, especially virtual OTAs are kind of okay. They're, they're not a big deal. It worked deal. last year. Yeah. I mean, I think that a lot of guys look at it as, I mean, imagine if you got in there, your dream is to play in the NFL and during the spring you blow out your knee and you're never the same. You know what I mean? Why, why even put yourself in that, in that aspect? Because it's happened a thousand times where guys are like, Hey, you know, I'll make the team in the spring and, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you it's it, there's so much politics within football you, you you're not gonna make the team you're already made or not made yes you can outplay outpunt your coverage and play really well and you know make a team and make a squad and I think that's the thing but that usually happens in fall camp mm -hmm. so we see that a lot we we I, I know a lot of young guys and young teams want want that head start and you know they think that they're inventing the circle but in reality you know taking care of your body staying strong um you know having the self assertive a certain certain to you know self-start and work, you know, train your own body. If you can't do that, then you're kind of letting your own athletic ability go, if that makes sense. So yeah. it's like you gotta handle, handle yourself. You know what I mean? Like as an NFL guy, you, your body is your resume. So you kind of got to take care of yourself. If you're not taking care of yourself, then I think if you, even if we were in person, you weren't going to be taking care of yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So about that alligator photo, like how did that happen? <laughs> you're like enough of that. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, that alligator photo was crazy. I was with my, uh, I was with my buddy in um, South Florida, and we dr uh, drove over to Lake Okeechobee. He owns his own little uh, outfitters down there, um, and he leases like I don't know, five thousand acres. It's crazy. Um, but we, I was down there to go hog hunting, which is an invasive species that they're disgusting. They're not cute little piglets. I promise you, they are big, 
it's like hairy, down there. tusks. Oh, they're, yeah, they're nasty. And yeah. they're invasive. So you kind of have, uh, I mean, you still obviously pay to hunt and stuff like that, but they're like, hey, we have uh, a trophy gators, like a pen, basically. And it, I mean, say what you will, you had to kind of pick and hunt. And you know, I remember you use rod and reel, you hook it up to their back and it's like, you know, fighting. Didn't sound very boat. hard. He literally FaceTimed me and said he was fishing. Five minutes later, he FaceTimes me and he has a gator on a hook. I'm like, wow, yeah. that was so hard. It wasn't that hard. It's not the hardness of it. It's put, pulling in a So tell, them, tell them how you, how you did that. Because I think it's fascinating <laughs> Because he didn't just like, okay, yeah, he, tell yeah, me how so you caught it. You, you like hook it on his back. I'm not going to try to be too vulgar, um, but you hook it on his back, you lasso it up, you get its uh, snout down. And when you get its snout down, um, you take like a little 22, little, you know, I'm not sure if you guys know ammo, but a little 22 uh, long rifle. And it's, you know, the most humane I've ever, I mean, I've hunted my entire life and that was the most humane I've ever put an animal out. And of course, I go out or, you know, Carly gets attacked by PETA and <laughs> Europeans for killing a gator. But anybody from the South understands this, that, uh, that it's, it's like it's a little deer. It's like hunting deer. Like they hunt. Yeah. They're invasive. Stuff like that. Yes. It, yeah. Not all of them are invasive. They are truly from the Florida coastline, but, or Florida, uh, lakes, but it was, it was a cool experience. It, it honestly was. And, you know, one of the guys, they threw it on there and said, Hey, do you want a picture? And I was like, sure. I'll send it to Carly. She might put in her story or something like that. I don't know if she was going to make a post about it. But it went viral, so obviously she's gonna make fun. He was on TMZ. But, but I put it I on. I said my... the one time he he goes on, he's on literally on TMZ, and I get no credit. I know it's crazy, but we put, I put it on my back, and one of the uh, one of the um, uh, guides was like, "Hey, at this point, might as well just carry it to the truck." So I went and carried it to the truck, and they thought that was hilarious. So then they got a video of that. But um, you know, my joke is it's the uh, it's the gator that got Chubb's hand. So I got to get oh, it out of there. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's fair. But yeah, so. That's, That's fair. fair. For yeah, Happy yeah. Gilmore. For Happy Gilmore. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was it was a cool experience. Honestly, um, I it's Browns, not, Browns fans it loved it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Well, I mean, it, it was yeah. great content for all of us that run the pages. <laughs> like it was everywhere. So yeah. yeah. No, uh, like like Carly said, did it you was on, post about it? You probably did. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carly. T- uh, Carly texted me or you know screenshotted me a picture of TMZ, and I was like, TMZ does positive stories. I've never seen that before. So. <laughs> It was uh, it was cool to see. Um, obviously, we had a really big off season. Andrew Berry brought in a ton of new free agents. Have you like talked with any of the new teammates yet? Um, see, so I've been, obviously, like we just said, uh, we had meetings. eleven starters. Yeah, obviously, meetings and some of that. New team. Um, but like we've had eleven starters returning, which is just unheard of. You know what I mean? Uh, so luckily, I haven't had to do too much naming and face face memorization and stuff like that with with um the offensive guys but some of the defensive guys um i've you know again we're not in person so i haven't really you know met Clowney and stuff like that but uh malik you know stuff like that so um talking to some of the dbs i mean usually offensive linemen and dbs were like what's up man (laughs) like we don't really we don't really hang out too much but we're like what's up you know real realize is real so but i would assume like correct me if I'm wrong, but after the draft, you'll probably be introduced to like the yeah. line guys. Or... Yeah. We, yeah. I'd be surprised. We have a really deep offensive line room. Um, they could get a pick, but I feel like, you know, See, really I, know this works. Draft. I thought you like had to like, yeah. I mean, obviously this draft would be smart to kind of back up some guys, but, um, but we have plenty. We have, we have, yeah, we have so much depth and we have guys who have started in games. Um, that's the biggest thing is if you get guys kind of, and Hey, I was one of them you know the fifth round you get guys who are playing hard who work hard but you know they don't have that nfl body yet and it takes it takes time to do that i mean it took me three years it takes a lot of guys longer so um you know kind of finding your niche and what works for you uh being a pro kind of thing so yeah. it takes a little bit but it's uh i'm excited for all these guys who are going to be uh you know into the into the league they and did great. Experience i it. mean from what i've listened to on all my radio and podcasts it sounds like they did with the off season as far as like the front office and everybody and Andrew Barry like yeah. everyone's really happy with it. Yeah, well, I mean, we have eleven stars on offense, so it's always going to be a little. But like easy. defense wise, I know mm-hmm. we need to build. So yeah, I mean, obviously, what do you it sucks. Guys think? It sucks with Sheldon and stuff like that. Obviously, that's my boy, but uh, you know, it it is what it is. You can't you can't get too uh too too caught on the personal side of a very business oriented mm-hmm. um you know organization. Yeah, I think they had a great offseason. Like, obviously, defense was a big concern for them 
last year as the offense was great. And I think Andrew Bear did a really good job bringing in new faces that are really going to help. And as for Sheldon, like, you never know. There might be a chance we can bring him back. That's you know, what I – yeah, I read. Financially. He's you just – He's going to have to, I mean, he's just, as he knows, he's expensive. He's a good player. So, um, you know, sometimes seeing that $12 million or whatever, I don't remember the exact number. I think it was 12. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I mean, that's a big number. I mean, that's going to clear up a lot of area and that's, that's kind of how a lot of these rule or, uh, you know, contracts are set up is they give you all that money in the front end and then don't give you a lot of money towards the end. So they can be like, Oh, you know, when you do have a guaranteed contract, it's like, yeah, you know, it is kind of you kind of got to go with it, but he, he I think he'll land on his feet and just do, do just fine. I think Stefanski said he had his like pre-draft, uh, pre-draft interview. I guess he said I think he was like, yeah, we really hope to have Sheldon back, but it obviously has to work with Cap. But I think the main purpose of it was after the Clowny signing, we didn't have like enough money to sign all of our picks, so I think that's why they had to do it. Like, no doubt, had to. no doubt, and it, that's what I'm saying is like it's a very you can't get too caught up in the business side of, you know, or the personal side of a business. Um, So I I know that I like him and I want him back and he works hard and he stays healthy. Um, I think those are all important parts that, you know, put an asterisk next to someone's name um, that, you know, they're a little bit special. So I think that staying uh, healthy is huge. Staying healthy is huge. I mean, obviously it's kind of crazy, even with me, you know, I've played football for 21 years going on 22 years of my life. And I've been injured twice, you know what and I mean? And they, were, and they were two weeks apart, you know what I mean? So it, it's, it's absolutely crazy. I, I'd say that I've always been an Iron Man who, uh, who could, you know, push past a lot of, you know, weak stuff like hand and elbow and shoulder and stuff. But once you got, get to the muscles and the ligaments and the tendons, it's, it's a little different. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was just crazy. I think healthiness, uh, taking care of, you know, his body and he did that real well, it, sh- it should pay dividends. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning of your time in Cleveland. So I think it was two years ago. I remember it was Dorsey. So Dorsey was the GM. Uh, so you got traded. I think it was for like a fifth round pick or maybe a, maybe it was like six or seven. But we acquired you at like the 53 deadline. I remember that. So just take us through what that trade was sort of like in the experience of getting traded. Yeah, yeah it was crazy, man. It was uh, – it truly was. We – um we had uh i was we had a fourth preseason game um and i was getting ready to start at right tackle i don't know why but they were going to start me at right tackle to see if i i had a depth to me um and i remember i was getting a hot tub and getting ready it was the end of camp and i get you know uh, we called him the reaper i remember what his name is probably john or something and uh he came down and uh came to see uh, came to see me he was like hey but uh coach wants to talk to you and i'm like all right. I don't know why I'm about to go play in a game. Why would he ever want to talk to me? So then all of a sudden I get a call. Hey, uh, you know, Wyatt again, you know, they give me a little spiel about the personal and business side of it. Um, and then say, Hey, we've, uh, we've traded you to the Cleveland Browns. And I'm like, Oh, sweet. You know, I, well, how far is that? I don't even know where that is. I mean, I know where Cleveland is, but I mean, I know where Ohio is, but I didn't realize it was two and a half hours from Buffalo. So I, I get there, I leave the day, um, the next day and I get into uh I flew in from Virginia yeah you flew in you helped me move Not that it happens, um my parents are, my ex that was when you my, my parents yeah I that. did yeah. well because I was yeah. yeah it all happened really fast like you literally which people that I, are listening to this probably know how this goes but like you you um you find out and then because of the way it was like preseason he had to be here in like 24 hours or something it was crazy yeah I had luckily to, it wasn't to you know san diego it was to cleveland which was three hours away yeah. like it was drivable and so we made it happen yeah once i got home from actually talking to the coaches i got a call from dorsey and uh freddie and they were you know obviously very promising and you know i get there and you know i, I kind of looked at it as like oh i failed the uh, the bills you know i wasn't good enough to play um but then i looked at it as you know i had a team that wanted me that knew that i had talent dorsey is a genius i think that it takes sometimes to where it takes time to, to work out something like he's done. But as you can see, he did it with the Chiefs. He did it with the Browns. He's, he knows what it takes to get those guys around. And then you find the pieces. And it's all, I mean, yeah, you can have all the players in the world, but if they don't want to work, you know what I mean? I think that that's something important when we, when we got Coach Stefanski is you got someone who we trusted who, um, you know, wasn't 
you know, in, in quotations, because he is absolutely brilliant, wasn't too smart. You know what I mean? If he didn't know something, he was going to get someone who's a specialist on that um, to either explain it to him so he could explain it to us or explain it to us. Um, I mean, for example, with the social justice and stuff like that that came out, you know, the, over the summer, you know, he wasn't saying like, oh, this is how we have to act this. No, he goes, hey, I obviously am uninformed to issues around this country. And I want people who are from this country, who are from backgrounds or neighborhoods who are outspoken about this to speak. I remember Jarvis, Kendall, yeah, like Chris. Jarvis, like kind of that role to. It, it's yours. You know what I mean? Like, guys, right? yeah, talk to us. Let us know what's going on. Like sometimes, you know, we think everything's okay. And then you find out that not everything's okay. And you kind of got to um, put your work boots on and get ready to work. And I mm -hmm. think we did that with the digital divide too. This, this, uh, this fall camp, we did a, uh, um, like I said, digital divide drive where we, I think we raised $250,000 for, uh, Eastern Cleveland, um, public schools or schools. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, for example, staying online, could you imagine if you can't afford, if you're month to month, you know, rent, you can't you can't afford really anything and now they're like oh by the way you have to get a ipad and be on you know online you have to have internet you have to do all these different things yeah. and it's like well we can't <laughs> we can't afford that so i think that that really helped the burden um for a lot of people um and honestly um was a great thing to do um but that was that was coach i think that, that he gained that trust because you know he wasn't i mean i say it because he is truly smart but wasn't too smart about anything you know what i mean he was like hey I need to learn, you know, and that's, that's how he is. And that's how he approaches a lot of things. But I just wanted to say something else about your question. So back to like, uh, Wyatt coming here, um, from Buffalo, like <clears throat> I always told him, like Wyatt definitely had this sense of loyalty in Buffalo, like that they gave him his first chance. They drafted him and they have a very strong culture there. And, I think that Wyatt was like super committed to them and just really appreciate them giving him a chance. So it was hard for him when he left, but I always told Wyatt, you know, that's great. Like we should always be grateful for Buffalo, but also Cleveland wants you. Like you would always rather be traded than cut and picked up. Right. Like yeah. you were wanted. So. I mean, like I said, like that's the kind of way you can look at almost every situation. One of two ways you can look at it as, Hey, you know, oh, poor me, this sucks. I, I can't believe I got cut. And, you know, there were moments of that where I felt like, what did I do wrong? Like, how did I, you know, you come, you think about it, you're like, oh, you know, I let down everybody. And then all of a sudden you realize like, no, that's not how this worked. I, well, and it was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> that's, that's, was, I got to a team that not only had better, you know, promise or potential. Um, and I think we're showing that now. I mean, I, I know the bills are nasty, but um, I really think, I mean, last time we played them, we beat them. So, yeah. Sorry about it, Bills, but no, um, but no, it, it was, it was an awesome experience. And I, I looked at it positively and, you know, it wasn't, I got down on myself for a little bit and then I got over it and, you know, and then I got and to like learning. And now we're ball. going into third year in Cleveland and it's been the best thing to happen to us. Yeah. So. And now I'm firmly a Browns fan. So Browns. <laughs> obviously, but no, it's, uh, and I'm obviously becoming a Cleveland fan too. I, I, I tell Carly this all the time is I, I love this area. Um, you know, obviously I tell my agent that too, uh, you know, he always asks, Hey, you know, this is, this is the, you know, this is the scenario or this is a situation. It's like, you know, do you, do you like it there? And I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I love, love it. Lines, but I remember Eric Cush, let me borrow his, his, uh, <laughs> his 24 foot, uh, trailer. And I got all my stuff from, uh, from Buffalo to Cleveland. And then that was so nice. learning a playbook. And then from there, having a full off season in a program, which I haven't had in the NFL. And then obviously I had a, you know, a great year, obviously Bill Callahan, the offensive line, I'm around great guys. And it's really easy blocking for Nick and Kareem. But that being said, it was a full off season to learn the playbook, a full off season to actually show what I have. And coach Callahan wanted me to play. You know, I think that sometimes you got, you have really good players who either lose their will or, you know, whatever, because they don't get that opportunity. And that was what's so nice with coach Callahan is, you know, even in the uh, pre-draft, he sent me a text and he was like, hey, you know, we're looking for you today. I remember this, this Saturday. Um, and when they picked you were up getting drafted? When I was getting drafted. Oh. And they picked up Tim Settle and then three picks later, I was to Buffalo. So, and then I got Coach Castillo, Juan Castillo, who's an absolute savage. But um, it was it was awesome to, uh, to go from, you know, where I did, you know, I wanted to go with Coach Callahan. I love Coach Callahan. And then all of a sudden, 
somehow he's tough, but he is a smart, came back into my life and came to Cleveland and he's a smart success. Man. So he is a very smart man. He is an angry little dude, but he is uh, he's awesome. I love him. So last off season for like many fans, the question mark about the offensive line was the right guard position. And then you just came in and absolutely dominated for the team this year. Did kind of like the doubts in the beginning help fuel you at all? Yeah, no, I remember um, coming in and, you know, that was the biggest uh, competition. You know, everybody had their job set, but me basically. Um, and I remember when we were getting into it, uh, Drew, uh, Drew Forbes and Colby Gossett both opted out. I remember probably every single Browns fan was like, oh, here we go again. You know what I mean? Here, here it is. This is what's going to happen. And, yeah, I was like, screw that. That's not going to happen. I, I, from the spring, like I said, Coach Callahan, he gave me every opportunity. So I, it's not like I was out there saying, like, oh, it's my job to lose. But in a way, that's exactly how I looked at it. I was like, I have to outwork this competition. I have to outwork, you know, Drew. I have to outwork Col Colby. And then when we get here, they obviously – you know, opt out and so how did it make you feel after it. when they opted out? And were you ass. like, like, because part, like, I feel like part of your mind would be like, okay, well, I'm kind of in, but then also like you killed it. Like what made you? Yeah. I mean, you can't really get so called. Good. You can't get on, you can't get too far into, um, you know, all the, all the, you know, nitty gritty of the work. Right. So it's like, you're focused on your work. Each day you're getting better. You don't realize that by the end of camp, you've gained over so many guards in the league because you outworked them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not saying that I outwork Brandon Sheriff and all this different stuff. Like I think that they're absolutely talented and they're working just as hard. I think that with, with coach, the way that he explained it, the way that he was on my butt about it. Didn't coach Callahan coach Brandon Sheriff? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Coach that, Callahan's like insane. Yeah. I've never and met him. And Zach but... Martin. I mean, he's, I mean, obviously Trent, um, Trent Williams and stuff like that so he's obviously <laughs> the guru but um I mean this year we had three guys on all pro um Jack Joel and you know myself so it was it truly was a blessing to be on that kind of offensive line and you know even with JC I think that JC doesn't get the uh the credit he, the deserves. Credit he deserves because he is I mean he's the smartest guy on the field and, and even with the quarterback he he truly is he really I think that Baker's brilliant right I think Baker's brain works differently and he just gets it um, and so does JC, you know, I, I feel like the things that they just see at the corner of their eye, they already know what's going on. Um, and, you know, obviously year eight, hopefully I can get there in a couple of years and, you know, learn some things from them too. And that's, what's so good about them. But you know, also, here. um, another thing with like Wyatt's success last year, I say this a lot, like Wyatt doesn't have social media. He takes every single, oh, I don't know if awards the, the right word. He takes everything with a grain of salt. So I'd be like, Oh, like pro football focus is saying this, um, this this blogger or whatever this this news article said this and I would totally feed into it and I think it's even it shows so it's, it's even more amazing how well Wyatt did considering he didn't he, he's so humble when it comes to that kind of stuff like he doesn't read into any of that I'd read him stuff he's like I don't want to hear it I don't want to hear it and I think that says a lot because he didn't yeah. get hyped up and be like I'm the best or you know I'm top in the league whatever and he just played his game and like I just think that's really impressive because most yeah. people probably don't know that like you don't see any of that yeah social and media I, stuff. I think with a lot of media especially social media but media in general is an overreaction right like either positive or negative it's either an overreaction where oh my gosh Wyatt Teller is the best player to ever play the game and it's like all right well, yeah, like he while was, I'm he humble, was like thank you so much. He was like third in line for MVP at one point. Yeah, behind I mean, like obviously that was a joke, but no, it like wasn't a joke. But it was also like I would I read it to White, and he's just like, okay, that's like ridiculous. But yeah, because that's not real. Um, but no, it's okay, really well, was, who's paying pro football? Who players? got MVP for the past fifty years? Offensive lineman? No, but I'm it saying was a the joke, fact that you. But yes, um, I, and again, like no, no, it, it was a joke, baby. He was a. Brown's writer and he was just being he, he had miles on that list too miles was like number eight or number six miles is the guy. regardless I remember they pulled that up in the meeting room when we were still in person and they were like oh Wyatt Teller's in the MVP race and I was like oh thanks just more bulletin board um in our own room bulletin board room bulletin board uh pieces but no it was um it was it was cool I mean it truly it truly is you, you hear that stuff and with media like I like I was getting to um it's overreactions so you know, if I miss a block, oh my gosh, why I can't pass block worth crap. 
that's not true, right? Like, oh, I miss a block. Oh, why it can't run block? Not true. You know what I mean? Like, I think that there's so much consistent work that, yeah, I mean, obviously I play at the highest level and I've signed up for it. So I, I'm not too pissed about it. That's why I harm social media. So I don't have to deal with anybody saying anything positive or negative. Um, that's the biggest thing is, is like, you know, I have my biggest fan right here and she's, you know, whispering in my ear. Oh my gosh, you're the best. Oh my gosh, you're the best. And I'm just like, baby, I have so much more to improve on. There's so much that I have to get better at. Um, and, you know, some things that I can't control, some things that I can, obviously injuries, you can't control injuries, but you can control, you know, taking care of your body. You can control, you know, outworking people, getting your hands and feet right, you know, all that stuff. So you said you didn't like, you know, pay attention to what the outside noise was, but I thought it was going to be clear that you were going to be on the Pro Bowl. Like I was so <laughs> surprised when those rosters came out and you were not one of the guards on there. Like I, I, that was one of the most surprised I've been out, like throughout the entire year. So yeah, no, what was your reaction to that? No, no, uh, no I, I think that a uh, pro pro uh, all pro is honestly, um, I mean, pro bowl, uh, all pro. Yeah. Oh, pro yeah. all pros definitely more important because it's voted on by like the pros. So exactly. Right. But so, like, all, it, it's more of like a, a fan. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, and that's yeah. the thing is, it's like, I'm a young guy. My, my last name, obviously, I know a lot of people don't think about this, but sometimes when they get to, when you're the average fan and you go down a list for the longest time, the, the leading people in the, all, um, oh, you're Bowl, at the bottom I'm at the bottom. I'm T. So no one's going to scroll all the way down and then put, pick my name. Usually it's Kappa and Betonio, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I'm not being rude. Joel deserves every single Pro Bowl he's ever gotten, but um, I really do think that it takes time to get, uh, for people to learn your name. Obviously people scroll down to, uh, click, uh, Joe Thomas. So, you know, it just takes time. It just it takes, it just takes, uh, you gotta get your foot in the door. And I think I did that this last year and, you know, it doesn't mean squat if I don't keep on doing. I think that last year he was like, kind of like getting to be well known. It was my first full start. And year. again, like he does nothing, which is fine, but like to, like, he has no interaction with fans on social media. So like a lot of that kind of thing with the pro bowl is so it's fan votes. Right. So I can post all I want, but I mean, people to follow me, come on. Like it's, I think that maybe next, there's always next year, right? Yeah, is that what you're not, saying? There's always next I'm year. Not, yeah. I, and, and that's the biggest thing is, is they didn't even have a game. So yeah, they didn't even have a game. Like so I we didn't really play. miss it. <laughs> but no, um, no, it, it honestly, it's, it's just a blessing to even be, in the all pro, you know, I mean, to be in the all pro list. And, you know, at one point, like I said, I just have to keep on improving and keep on playing at a high level. And there's no question that my name could be pro bowl. Between 2019 and 2020, the difference between the level of play, like the, and the success was obviously very clear. What would you say was the main difference between the team in 2019 and the team in 2020 that allowed you guys to have so much more success? Yeah, I don't know. I, know I, think that, I think that's, <laughs> I think that that's uh, a lot of different key things that go into that. But um, one thing that I think is uh, we can attribute it to is, you know, we have, you know, it's a cookie cutter league. So the plays are the same, but our attention to detail, um, obviously having, you know, great tight ends and, you know, hoop and a great offensive line that was playing. I think that having, you know, two, you know, obviously in Jack, all pro, and then in Jed, who is playing at an extremely high level as well. Um, you know, we have guys who can play on the edge. You know, we have the we have the knowledge, we have the technique, we have the fundamentals, but we also have the talent. Um, and I think that that's, uh, that's something that put it all together. Um, we did invest in our O-line. We did invest time. in our O-line, and, you know, obviously adding Jed and Jack and is important. you were just a important. cherry on top. No one expected it. Yeah, and then obviously uh, Joel and JC playing at a high level. It was like all of us were were you know batting batting well, so it was it was awesome. You know, then we I think that you know the coaching also does help. Um, you know, like I said, I kind of hit it on the the head a little earlier, but um, with with Coach Stefanski, you know, he we we trust him and we liked him, and obviously he was you know he was you know gaining the trust of the guys. So you know, you play harder. I, I, you know, you play harder for each other whenever you you do start to win and. Um, I mean, again, you know, I've been blessed to have the guys around me and, you know, the guys behind me who, uh, who make me look a lot better, but I think that there's, uh, a lot of things that came together and we wanted to play, uh, play, play well. And I think after we <laughs> went to, uh, Baltimore first game of the season and 
got our tails whipped, it was it was time to I go. I think chemistry was good too. You've mentioned that yeah. you were like everyone just kind of gets along. Like yeah, we don't really have any hotheads or people that don't like each other. Well, I mean, obviously, I don't know who Nick likes or does not like. He doesn't talk, but um, everybody else I can usually get a good read on, and uh, you know. But no, it's uh, I guess the uh, the 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 talker is Kareem, but no one probably thought any different of that. So there's this play you guys would run where it would be kind of like a counter to the left and you'd start on the right side and sprint all the way to the left and be kind of the lead blocker. I, how do you move like that fast at your size? It's like crazy <laughs> to me. No, I mean, obviously I, there was a lot of poles that I wish I had back, but uh, you know, usually across the center poles, I mean, you get a lot of time to, to practice it. Obviously I've been a left guard my entire career and then, you know, 16 or 17 games at, at right guard. So um, you know, being able to move, you know, How'd stay you low. And, so quick? I guess it's a lot of it's got. I given. agree. I have the same question sometimes. I'm like, you are so large, in a good way. Like he's like he's well, he's very like proportioned, but like. Well, that's force. How, yeah, but like you like <laughs> Mass, uh, no like that video of him that video of him tackling or pancake or whatever. Uh, Tyron Matthew. Like. Well, I I that it one. looks that like one a, I it, it looks like a car crash. I'm like, if you, if anyone was coming at me that fast, like, which is why I am not, you know, a professional athlete, but yeah. it's just like terrifying. Like you move so fast for your size. That's the whole point. Um, obviously there's guys who do it better. Um, you know, you see Joel, <laughs> Joel moves really well. I think that he's, uh, he's a really good guy to run behind too, but um, we had a lot of success. I obviously, you know, like I said, the guys behind me make me look really well, but I think if I just give them a, a three inch hole, they can, they can score a touchdown. So that's the way that Everyone I view every play. Everyone each other. Yeah. That's it's the way. like you guys compliment Baker, yeah. the running backs compliment. I just feel like it's just good chemistry. Yeah. And I agree. I think that that's the system we, we play into. I think that coach, you know, truly his, his saying is marriage of the run and pass where, you know, we can make a full speed run look, turn into a pass and look like a pass and you know what I mean, but we can run it down their throats. I mean, looking at some of the um, stats from last year, I mean, I, I know our, our offense uh, was potent. I mean, we had, we need more touchdowns obviously from, you know, from the run game, but uh, you know, I think that uh, we are talented in first down and second down running. So um, if we can stay on top of that, uh, improve the negative areas, right. That we all have um, and truly, um, even the chemistry that we have, I mean, we were spitballing, you know, learning the plays as we were going. I think that was how a lot of teams were in a lot of defenses. Um, so this year it's obviously going to be closer. It's going to be uh, other teams know what they're doing and we got to know what we're doing better. So. Yeah. So just to add on to that last question, like offensive linemen usually don't have a lot of highlights, but again, your year was just fantastic to watch. What was your favorite highlight play? Like for me, it was when you actually blocked, I think it was the Eagles full secondary for Kareem on that touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that one was funny I just uh I just I knew Kareem can always make one miss um that's kind of you know why he's so good at what he does um so I just threw one and I was like I'm just gonna take the L here T, T posed it up and uh you know tried to try to shove the guys out of the way it was it, you know I, again I think that uh you know Kareem made me look good I mean obviously Which I could have I could have just blocked that guy but I, I didn't of all um, the ones I've like shown you Cause I'm always showing Wyatt like all the highlight videos and stuff. And yeah. what do you, what do you think personally is your most? Um, I don't know. There's a couple uh, good blocks. I really like that one. That one, you know, just because you're on the, you're on the sideline, it's your block that makes or breaks the play. I like that. But you know, sometimes there's a couple, uh, you know, offensive line cleans that, you know, a lot of guys don't see, you know, the tight, the, the tackles block in their defensive end, he comes in and all of a sudden I just go out and clean them. Um, those are sometimes the cleanest, nastiest hits. It's a part of the game that, you know, people don't really like um, discouraging the pass rush, but I, I just love that. And um, There's a couple couple good ones where I just go out and just snap someone down. Um, there's also a couple of good ones where, you know, I'll be punching, I'll be in pass pro and I'll just see someone, I'll be man side and I'll just whip them to the ground and they'll fall on their face and I'll just I hold them there. Um, so aggressive. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of good ones. I, again, I like the, uh, I like the, the nitty gritty of it. I mean, obviously putting people on their back, you know, if your guy's on the ground, he can't make the play kind of mindset. Um, so that's kind of, yeah. What about the somersault blocks? 
Yeah, that oh, one was, I love those. that one sucks. I love that play. And I wish He's that, done a couple. because I pancaked the guy, but then the guy gets up, you know, doesn't give up on the play and strip sacks or strip tackles uh, Chubb. Yeah. Ugh. So while it looks cool, cut it right after the block. <laughs> but I think you but, did um, another against uh, Washington this year. And that yeah. ended up being a touchdown. I'm pretty sure yeah, that, that was the Chubb again, one. That was, yeah, the that first, was a cool one. Was the first one the end of 2019? Season? Yeah, that was New England in the rain. Yeah. yeah. Good job. The second one was uh, <laughs> uh, Nick. Was it Nick or Cream? It was Nick. Nick. I think it was Nick. Nick. Nick just books it. And I just, uh, Kendall Fuller, who's actually one of my close buddies, uh, he would he, uh, he kind of tried to play the edge kind of soft. And I just, yeah, sorry, uh, go Hokies. But was that who it was? That you got? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was uh, Kendall. Kendall. He was pissed. The next time he came in, he just he just cut me, cut me like cut my edge down, and I was just like, "You dick!" Because I can't really attack you if you're like, I don't know. I can cut you, but I wasn't. That I want to rewatch those summer salt ones because those kind of phased out a little bit. We yeah. should bring that back sometime. Yeah, the summer. Even salt. though I've asked Wyatt, I'm like, "Do you like think like, oh, I'm gonna do a like a somersault?" It like, I think it's the, spontaneous. The first one, it's, like, it's either eat crap or tuck your chin and roll. Tuck so, and roll. Tuck and roll. So I usually, uh, I try to do the latter. It's entertaining. Um, I don't know. It's I, I. It was funny when I went to Virginia Tech. Uh, I was a defensive lineman, and you know I was always athletic, but I was always slow. And as a single side defensive end, you can't really do that. As a strong side defensive end, you can be a big boy, but you got to be able to run, um, especially in our offense with Bud Foster or our defense with Bud Foster. So I, you know, I went from being one of the less athletic defensive tackles or defensive linemen to being the most athletic athletic offensive offensive lineman when I was at Virginia Tech. So the playoff game was so hyped up and Juju Smith-Schuster, he made some really iffy comments. They asked him if he noticed any difference about the team and the success of this year. And he just said to him, it's the same old brands. And you really, it really seemed like that ticked you off. I think it was after Kareem's, it might have been his second touchdown, but I think it was after his first touchdown. You came running down the sideline. And I think you yelled, same old brands, or just the same old brands. Like everyone talks about Baker and his leadership, but like you really look like you know how to get the team riled up on the sideline and get them fired up to play. Like, what do you think about that? Well, no, I, <laughs> I appreciate that. But no, when I went over there and I was screaming that, it's not like everybody's like, yeah. No, they're like, all right, why? Calm, calm down. So I'm trying to rip <laughs> someone's face off. Um, but no, it was, uh, I, it was an awesome, awesome. The way that, the way that you speak should kind of, you know, humble yourself. I don't know. I don't know why, why people can't do that, but I don't know how you can respect an opponent, especially someone who's in the NFL. Um, so that did tick me off, but honestly, you got to keep in mind, that's, that's how some people's egos are. You know, they, they talk. And you can't get too caught into it. It's not like if I saw him, I'd punch him and be like, oh, yeah, same. Old. No, and it's just like, oh, that's just funny. You're running your mouth and you can't help that your center, who's a great center, snaps it over his head. You know what I mean? You can't help that we have 28 points in the first quarter. You know what I mean? I, I, I guess you can't help it. by not doing that, but <laughs> and not talking smack and not thinking that you're so much better than your opponent. And that this isn't even worth your time. Obviously, that's not smart in playoff uh, football. Right. Um, so I just think that it was uh, fitting. And um, honestly, that whole game, that whole win, that whole opportunity, right, that whole experience was, you know, again, no fan base deserved that more against a rival in their division who has for years, and I mean, it's not like this is a lie, have, have beat us, have beat, have beat Cleveland and beat, beat our, their fan base can talk smack all they want because they've beat us. So now it's like, hey, it's funny, you guys started off 11-4, now you're at home, you know what I mean? So it's like, like, yeah, it was a great, or I think 11 wins. I don't remember. They had, like, so many they wins. were, like, 11 and 0. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something. or something like that. Well, you can only do that for a week. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, Whatever. it was. Uh, <laughs> but, no, it was it was fitting. And I think that, that the fans, for one whole year, can can talk their smack. And I, I, I like that. You know, it finally gives Cleveland an opportunity to, to you know, give the finger up. So, but like the way that Wyatt, that I love that video of him because he's like so fired up and like, I mean, I get why fans love it. Like that was like, that's the best, but like at home or like not at home, like in Wyatt's normal life, he's like, as you know, you've now talked to him. He's like kind, 
kind of not soft but just like sweet Wyatt like he's like a good old boy <laughs> and I always ask him I'm like how do you get into Don't tell him, dude. <laughs> what no, how do you get into this like mode because he goes and like rips guys faces off and I'm like how do you like flip the switch and I think that that video of him is like a good example like for people that know him to be like okay like he, he that is that mode yeah no it's a switch I mean because, obviously, like that's not just like how you are no but you learn that switch when you're in your high school whenever you're in college you, you're able to you know kind of flip a switch between even the whistle or like between whistles i'm gonna i'm gonna play as hard as i can i I think that anybody would respect that obviously guys in the league do not respect it some guys just want you to bow down obviously you know there's defensive tackles who've had success who you know they can do stuff like that but um for the most part you know i'm not going to back down to anybody i mean i might i may respect you and the better the more you respect me the less it's probably going to hurt you know what i mean but it's kind of like whenever i have someone who talks i'm just you know i'm going to obviously play harder and it is you know it Usually there is a very unwritten, you know, respect between players. Um, you're not trying to roll anybody up. If you see someone falling behind someone's legs, yeah, until you in, don't throw them down. In you Tennessee this year, someone stomped on his leg, so I don't know. If yeah, you're but he got he got suspended. Yeah, he um, did get suspended. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but no, I mean, obviously, like if I was a little girl, I probably wouldn't. But and I'm not saying that women aren't strong. That's not what I meant. But um, <laughs> it's it truly is like I, I'm not gonna be a victim about someone stepping on my leg i remember i was like did someone just step on my leg and baker was like what the just happened and we were like did did anybody just see that baker was like mad and like uh, uh, the the umpire or the uh yeah (laughs) the back judge no he uh he came up and he wrote his number down and he was like yeah that was the crazy that was the stupidest thing i've ever seen um but actually the ref didn't see it so um but no baker and i were like the hell just happened Mm -hmm. um but no, usually there is an un, un, unwritten rule of respect between yeah. players. Um, you're going to go as hard as you can between plays. And usually most of my pancakes, most pancakes in general, come off of, you know, tripping over someone and or, you know, going out, reaching out for a, for a play and someone just you know, uses your weight or whatever and finishes on top of you. Uh, that's how most of them happen. And that's because that's one guy going 100% with another guy who's going 100%. Most guys respect that. Um, some but guys that, don't. Do some guys are just He's not a guy who he was like, his, his, he, and it's the same with Honey Badger. I love Honey Badger. He's a funny dude, but he truly is someone who just talks and chirps. That's what his game is. That's how he's played. That's why they call him the Honey Badger, you know? So there's egos everywhere in the league. And you got to realize that that's why I knew that if anything I said after I smacked him in the mouth, he was just going to keep on talking. I was like, yo, we both know I got your ass. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was just funny. And, um, it, uh, it ended up like him respecting me like dang, funny. 77 just put me on my butt you know so it's like usually there's an unwritten rule of respect even with the guys who you know chirp yeah and then even after it would seem you guys humbled them after like slapping them on their home turf claypool goes on i think it was a tiktok live and he goes browns are gonna get clapped next week and then you guys go in to kc and play an absolutely tremendous game and i guess a lot of the fans kind of maybe expected you guys to fold being down i think it was nine 19- three at one point being a young team and you guys just battled back and if it wasn't for a ref and if he was able to do his job you guys probably win that game yeah Yeah. but like i mean i'm not gonna ever defend a ref i mean i think that they're human too um but no i that was just a crazy play i mean obviously hindsight says you mean like the helmet to helmet the helmet to helmet obviously yeah the targeting is hard to see um but obviously you can't control that i can't control hollywood you know but then they called the same call against that's the same thing that happened in the next game that's the the same thing it's the same thing that happened two years ago with the uh the defensive uh it was the saints yeah yeah yeah. with the saints and the rams yep and then the next week it got called for the team that ended up winning crazy it's they gotta they gotta put a like review in place where you can review these rules because the ability for just a so blatantly obvious target to not be reviewed or called is ridiculous Exactly. Especially and that's in a playoff thing. game. It's yeah. a touchdown, so it has to be reviewed. Like, that's my it biggest thing. No How sense. do you miss that even on the touchdown review? Like, yes, the, uh, did the ball get around, but you're also noticing, is that the crown of his helmet? Like, I don't know. Like, it's a bang-bang play, but then when you have a touchdown and or touchback that are reviewed, you shouldn't be able to miss it. That's yeah. my biggest thing, and that's why I feel that, you know, it's like, oh, they're failing us. But it's just like, you know, there's just things that, you know, I – 
you know, stop watching the offensive line and watch that stuff. Then, you know, then yeah. I can, then I can hold better. No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, it's, uh, it's, it truly is like, you can't, it is, what it, is. it is what it is. You can't get angry at, at that call. Honestly, if you look at it, there were a third and fourth downs that we could have capitalized on early in the game that the game might have not even been that close. You see what I'm saying? So I think that if we yeah. execute differently, more with less negative plays, with better execution, we won't even be in that situation to let the ref make a bad call. Um, and that's what we saw in a lot of games where, you know, we had, it didn't matter what the ref made because we're up by 28 points. We need to do that and we need to finish better. You know, I think that that's the biggest things that we should focus on rather than rule changes and all that different stuff. Looking a little bit forward to the future, obviously there's a big decision looming large for Andrew Barry and his staff on your extension and the extension of Chubb as well. So what are your thoughts? Is this, is Cleveland the place you want to be for the future? And have you like even begun the process of getting an extension? Yeah. So no, um, I've obviously I've talked to AB. I mean, obviously not a lot about numbers. That's more with my agent. Um, but no, I, I want to be here. I, I think that with the room that we have, with the, the team that we have, with the offense that we have, it's, it's friendly. It's very friendly to a right guard. Um, and I think that, uh, I would love to be here. I'd love to, you know, make the run this year. I think that that's the most thing, the biggest thing I can worry about, um, letting my agent deal with numbers and all that stuff and us focusing on making a run down the hill. Um, I think that that's the, uh, that's the goal, right? We, we want to win a championship and that would be a great resume, a little thing on my resume. You know, if I stay here, if I don't stay here is, you know, (laughs) within being in this place for three years, turning a team that, you know, again, had potential when I first got here, but not a winning record. And um, going from that to playoff bound and playoff caliber teams would be a, an amazing feat. I'd care more about that than, you know, all pro or anything like that. But um, I think that it's special. I think that we have a special team here and, you know, we can do it. We want to stay. I, I want to. Yeah. And there's no doubt. I want to, I want to stay. Um, but sometimes, and I, we, again, we hit this earlier, but the, the personal and the business side, um, obviously I think that there's the personal side of, I love everybody here and everybody, I think, you know, respects and loves me, but, um, it truly is, it truly is business. Um, mm-hmm. and I think that it would be dumb, obviously, if anybody, obviously it's a lot of money, there's no doubt, but I think that it would just be smart to, uh, to bet on myself and, you know, mm-hmm. take whatever opportunity comes. But if that's staying in Cleveland, I'll be a happy man. Yeah, and I definitely think there's a huge possibility that happens. Andrew Barry obviously has some tough decisions to make because the roster is loaded and people do have to get paid. But he's made it clear, like, the offensive line is a really big part of what he wants to build. And I really think, like, it helped transform Baker. Having that clean pocket when he was throwing, like, really, really helped him this year. I, I like, think he'd be crazy if he didn't, if you guys didn't work out a deal. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, again, uh, I'm blessed with the guys who are around me. Um, Baker, when he plays well, we all look well. Um, and obviously I think that that works too. Um, with being an offensive line, it's, it's a cohesive group. It's a cohesive unit. Um, so getting the tight ends, um, tight ends and offensive line and, you know, everybody to support him and, uh, get him ready to, you know, make those third down run or third down, <laughs> third down runs. Cause you know, he's good for one, but, um, you know, those big passes and, Um, getting the ball out snappy. I mean, again, it's hard to get sacked when you get the ball out in two seconds, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that he's really good at that. He has a freak arm and he, like I said, he, his brain works different. So he can, uh, he gets smart. Yeah. He's so smart. Um, But yeah, he is, uh, he's a good quarterback to have. And, you know, again, they, they got his, uh, his fifth year option, which is, you know, again, obviously he'd probably want some more money, but um, again, that's the, that's the business side of it. So, Hopefully I can catch up with him one day and have, uh, have what he has. <laughs> yeah. So that's all we've got for today. Uh, we really appreciate you guys coming on. So this was super fun. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank thanks thank so you much for, for coming. Us. Yeah. Sure. Thank you guys for having us. Of course. No problem. Hopefully we could do this again closer towards the season. Maybe we'll see. Yeah. 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 Of okay. Course. Go Browns. Let's do Go it. Browns. This is the Go year. Browns. Same Let's old Browns. Huh? Same old Browns. Yeah. Same old Browns.